any camo uh, underwear? Yeah. My I've, wife's got camo underwear. Really? You know? we need I to want get her somewhere. to wear underwear that's like fluorescent chartreuse. It's like fighting in the dark. Fluorescent? How does that count? Oh. <laughs> if I want her to know I said that, I'll tell her. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Mike D here. Look. Look who's with us. Jimmy Houston. Legend. <laughs> They say he's one of the three legends. Hey, you Welcome, doing, Mike. Man. Great to have you here. The, the, the other, the other two, the other two was going to be here, but they had to go pick their social security check. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this three legends thing. The, the three legends, of course, Bill Dance and Roland Martin yeah. and myself, and it's uh, we formed a brand a couple of years ago called the Three Legends, and uh, we've got several companies that we're doing licensing agreements. It's a licensing company. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got kayaks, we've got rods and reels, we've got life jackets, we've got all kinds of knives and hunting accessories, we've got tackle boxes, uh, belts, on and on and on and on, quite a few different products. Hey, and, and Mike, I, I tell people, if they buy one of those products, mm -hmm. get somebody to sign it, like Bill or Roland, wait till one of those guys die, sell it on eBay. There you go. Investment. Investment piece, <laughs> investment piece, I like that. You got plenty more years, and you, I noticed you only mentioned them two. You're fine. <laughs> You're going to outlive them both, right? I'll it's probably like, be the first one to die. Those guys are old. I'm telling you, they're old. We interviewed Bill Dance last year. and, and He's a year older now. I'll think one year, that. one year older. He was old last year. Man. Bill Dance used to make uh, jokes in front of my hair. Yeah. He's not making many hair jokes anymore. <laughs> he has hair. I didn't always see him with the hat. He doesn't have much hair anymore. Uh -oh. I would never know. He puts that T hat on. That's probably made his hair fall out. Yeah. He had that Oklahoma University hat. <laughs> hair wouldn't fall out. It looked like this. Hey, it's very impressive, Jimmy. Your hair. I'm looking and, for a Rogaine sponsor. So, do you have any connections at Rogaine? I, Hank Parker's been working using Rogaine for 20 years. They won't sponsor him. He's their best customer. <laughs> you should be work, You should be doing stand up in the Poconos, I think. <laughs> but I can remember no. back. I can remember back the the first uh, boats that I ever saw in a lake. Uh, one of them was Roland Martin's, and the other one was Noah's. <laughs> and uh, Noah had a lot larger boat, <laughs> but Roland could outrun him. Hey, there we go. Him. There we go. And uh, and 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 Noah's boat didn't smell real good either. I got to admit. <laughs> Jimmy, I want to hear your fondest fishing memory. Like, it, could it be your first fish? Maybe when you were no, a kid. Yeah, what know, is it? You know, I I, I, you, I don't know that you have a fondest fishing memory. But most of my greatest fishing memories evolve around my kids, like any anybody mm -hmm. else. Uh, if their, if their greatest memories evolved around their kids and and probably the greatest one was back you know we've been doing that television show 38 years it was back in the first two or three years of the show my daughter was uh, 12 or 13 years old and we were spinnerbait fishing and i uh, she was using the wrong color spinnerbait i was catching them on a chartreuse and, and blue and white spinnerbait she was fishing a white because she liked the white spinnerbait she just girls will pick lures by what's pretty to them and, and that afternoon sometime we're fishing all day long to make a 30 minute television show you know you know how it works mm -hmm. and and uh and and we she finally caught this giant seven pound plus bass and and it was a it was a moment that you know still even thinking about it to this day years and years and years later pretty much brings tears to my eyes mm -hmm. what what an incredible amount of joy she had and mine was probably multiplied by that much more and not only that she caught it on the bait that she had a real belief in white as opposed to chartreuse mm -hmm. and blue and and uh and that, that probably as i look back through all of those memories that probably sticks out more, more than anything mm -hmm. else and most everyone if you ask them that same question it's a great question uh would probably relate something back to mm -hmm. their son or their daughter or their wife or, yeah. or their girlfriend or it'd be something that they experience with someone else's joy in fishing, not their own. Not winning yeah. Angler of the Year titles, not winning bass tournaments, not, not doing that, but something they did that was that special moment with, 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 their, with their children. Now, okay, so you competitively fish, that's one type of fishing, but when you're recreational fishing with your family, with your loved ones, it's different, right? I mean, do you approach the water differently? Really, you're trying to catch fish. I mean, you're trying to have fun, you're catching fish. Yeah, you approach any, any type. You know, the television show, is. you know, you're, you're trying to find fish, catch as many as you can. Mm. Uh, in tournament practice, you're trying to find fish, not catch any of them. In a tournament, you're trying to catch them up to a point and then save some for the next day. Mm. And, and you're trying to, you're, you're, you're running, you're trying to catch a limit quick. You're, if you have an opportunity, maybe you catch a big one or two quick, 
and then fill your limit out. So there's all kinds of different ways you're approaching the water uh, in, in fishing you know, with your family. The key thing you're trying to do is have fun. Mm -hmm. Have fun, have fun. And you do that whether you're fishing with a three or four year old. And you know, we, we've developed what I believe is the finest uh, kids caster rod and reels, the Jimmy Houston kid casters, little anglers, which is little rod and reels made for three and four and five years old. And we uh, had a real innovative deal where we developed a tangle free where kids could fish with it and the line goes through the middle of the rod, there's no eyes on it, they can wrap it around the end of the rod and still throws. Uh, we developed little lures. These little lures, you throw them in the water and they transform into a styrofoam fish. No. So you catch one every time. Yeah. You might like that. Yeah. You might <laughs> dance plays with I'm it for sure. hours. I, <laughs> I mean, I get, he, he's gone through two or 300 lures. Yeah. You know? I, <laughs> but you, you throw it in a swimming pool, you throw it in a lake, put it yeah. in a bathtub, it transforms yeah. into a styrofoam fish. And we've licensed uh, Nickelodeon, the Ninja Turtles, Dora, mm -hmm. Bubble Guppies, uh, SpongeBob. I have SpongeBob underwear too, and camo. And <laughs> I just have to think. Let's see it, that. Jimmy. Come on, pull down your pants. <laughs> <laughs> this is a gorgeous setup. It's nice and light. I like it on left hand retrieve, but I understand how. Turn it over, reel it backwards. Okay, like this. <laughs> now reel it backwards. Backwards. There you go. Left handed. <laughs> that's, our new, no, that's our new Jimmy Houston left handed model. <laughs> but I understand, you know, most people use the right hand retrieve. Um, very light. How many bearings in there? That's a five ball bearing reel there. Uh, we have our, 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 our upper end model. When I say upper end retails, the rod and reel for about $159 uh, is, uh, is, uh, is a nine ball bearing reel and an IM9 graphite. Right. Uh, this is an IM8 graphite rod uh -huh. right here. And it's a beautiful setup. And it'll throw like a banshee. I'm telling you, it'll yeah. throw like, you know what a banshee is? Banshee is an animal, like a, like a banshee is like a, an, from Africa. A banshee is a ghost. Is it? A spirit. A female spirit. Really? And females are faster than males. Female ghosts are faster than Female ghosts. Throws like a banshee. Okay, just one last thing. How do we get off on that stuff? I don't know. You did. It's your fault. <laughs> Why is fishing important? Can't see that, Roger. Why, I, one very simple question. And it, I have my reasons, but why is fishing important? You know, there's a lot of sports that kids can choose to play, ball sports, um, swimming, you know, there's fishing, camping, hunting. Why is fishing important? Well, Mike, you know, all the sports are good, and I'm like everyone else. When I went through high school and college, I, I played everything you could play. Uh, you know, I, I, I lettered in several sports in high school and, and played it all the way since I could probably walk. And you, you have a lot of values and a lot of things you can gain and learn. You learn a lot. You learn how to win. You learn how to lose, you learn how to compete, you learn how to get better. But the outdoors, fishing and hunting, you, you learn a completely different and better set of moral and ethical values that you can't learn anywhere else. You can't learn on a football field, you can't learn on a basketball court, you can't learn on a baseball field or in the swimming pool. And a better set of moral and ethical values, values that are created by God, because you're in things that are created by God the woods and the waters and the rivers and the streams and, and everything you do outside. And it doesn't make any difference if you're hunting or fishing, or if you're camping out or, or whatever you're doing out there. You're out there and, and you're learning about life and death. You're learning the good things, the bad things, and, and, and your values will, will, they will simply be better. The kids will grow up mm. to be better adults. They'll be better parents, better grandmas and granddads, mm. all the way through. They'll be better citizens. Mm. to be better employees, to be better everything. Those are things you can never outgrow. I don't know how good a shape you're in, but my bet is you can't run up and down. Yeah, suck it in. I bet you can't run up and down the basketball court too many times. Uh, I bet you can't run out there and, 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 and throw a block on somebody, a linebacker coming at you. Uh, you. You outgrow those sports. You just, you simply outgrow them. You never outgrow hunting and fishing. I, I carried a guy fishing a couple years back, 96 years old, 96 years old. We caught 49 bass that day. Uh, I got to speak at his funeral about six or eight months later. But what a celebration when he probably caught his first fish at four, five, six, seven years old. 96 years old, caught 49 bass that day.
that's the value, that's the difference in hunting and fishing as opposed to everything else. That's, that is so well put. Jimmy Houston, the legend, thanks for being on the show. You're an inspiration and uh, can't wait for the new season of the show I'm on so NBC excited. Sports. And um, I think we should go fishing with Jimmy. Let's Learn go. a little more. Let's you want to go? Let's go. Come to Central Park. I fish in uh, New York, New York City. I invited Bill, too. We get Bill and Jimmy there and Roland. Fishing with Bill and Roland is like fishing with two old ladies, but you'll have fun. <laughs> that's no offense to old ladies. I love old ladies. <laughs>